recording. Good morning. I'm Joel LeClaire, Zoning Hearing Officer for San Mateo County Planning and Building Department. And uh, we're holding the uh, March 21st, 2024 Zoning Hearing Officer meeting um, in person at room uh, 101 in uh, 455 County Center in Redwood City, as well as uh, remotely via Zoom. And there is a link in the agenda for those who want to participate um, via Zoom. And before we go further in the meeting, we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join. Mm -hmm. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. So the first item on our agenda this morning um, is public comment. And uh, if um, anyone from the public, do we have anybody online, any participants? There are no online? participants on Zoom. Okay. Um, and uh, so um, if there are any, uh, and if, if uh, anyone here present at the meeting like to make a comment on a matter that is not on our agenda, um, please raise your hand and fill out or fill out a speaker slip. Okay, we have no uh, public comments, so we'll um, dispense with reading the instructions on how to do that and move on to our regular agenda. And um, Angela, would you uh, read the um, well, actually, I think it's sufficient with uh, with Aunt, Aunt, uh, <laughs> Angela reading it into the uh, into the record. Take it away, Angela. Good morning. Um, so, before I submit the coastal development permit and certificate of compliance type B um, to legalize one lot of record as a single six thousand nine hundred seventy square foot parcel, um, the parcel is located in El Granada on El Granada Boulevard and unincorporated El Granada. Um, you can, if you don't mind. Um, again, and, and there's no physical development proposed at this time. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait. Isn't there a clicker? I don't. I think, yeah. This is the mouse. Where it is. Oh, no. We're having some technical difficulties um, yeah, with the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So bear with us, we'll get those sorted out and continue. Easier when you're not in the room. I can give IT a call and see if they're able to come really quick, or I can shut down and restart. I would say shut down and restart. <laughs> that always works. Well, usually <laughs> works. Do we have to say the Pledge of Allegiance? Mm -hmm. Uh, no. <laughs> Oh, there we go. It's okay. I can, I can start there. <laughs> um, so, as I mentioned, the project parcel is in El Granada. It's outlined here in yellow. Um, this parcel is, as you can see, currently undeveloped. It's located on the east side of Highway 1, and there is um, within an urbanized single family residential neighborhood. Um, all of the surrounding parcels 
are developed with single family residential development. Um, so staff reviewed the project for conformance with the county's general plan, local coastal program, and subdivision ordinance. As discussed in the staff report, the project was found to be in compliance with the applicable standards. More specifically, that the project conforms to the general plan land use designation and meets the minimum parcel size for the underlying zoning district. In regard to the local coastal program, the project is consistent with the policies regarding uh, allowable land uses and development densities in urban areas. Uh, the process for legalizing parcels for which the coastal development permit is included. Um, and the standards for review of legalizing parcels. Um, in regards to the subdivision regulations, pursuant to section 7134.4.C2, um, the, if the chain of title that was uh, submitted by the applicant establishes that the parcel and its current configuration was first divided from all adjacent lands subsequent to J July 20th, 1945, um, staff is required to uh, prepare a certificate of compliance type B, which is before you at this time. Um, in our review of the chain of title, we confirmed that the subject parcel was initially part of the El Granada Highlands subdivision number three map, which was filed um, in the recorder's office in October of 1928. Um, a subsequent deed conveyance of the property in January 1964 showed the parcel in the same configuration as that original map. However, a subsequent uh, deed transfer was completed in November of 1965, which slightly altered the um, configuration of the parcel. However, the parcel remains in that same configuration. Um, is of conforming size, and as I mentioned, all the surrounding parcels are developed. Um, again, here's that parcel just from our current parcel map showing the dashed line towards the bottom of my circle as the original configuration and the rounded current Um, in terms of the project's conformity with CEQA, staff found that the project was categorically exempt um, given section 15315, class 15, which deals with minor sub land divisions for which certificates of compliance are covered under. Um, so based on that, it is, oh, I'm missing a zero. Sorry, um, that it's staff's recommendation that the zoning hearing officer approve the coastal development permit and certi certificate of compliance type B, county file number PLN 2023, that should, there's, should be 00003 um, by adopting the required findings and conditions of approval as detailed in attachment A. Um, this concludes my presentation, but I'm available for any questions. Thanks so much. Um, I, I don't have any questions. I think it's very clear uh, what the proposal is. And I um, want to ask, um, are you Zhang Zhu Wang? Yeah. Mr. Wang, have you read the staff report? Yes. And the findings and the uh, standard conditions of approval? Yeah. And do you agree with those? Yes. Good. Okay. Well, given that, um, pursuant to the findings in the staff report, and subject to the conditions of approval, um, I approve file number PLN 2023-00003. And um, if anyone wishes to appeal uh, this matter, appeal this approval, they can do so by submitting a um, written appeal application to the planning and building department and it needs to be accompanied by a Appeal fee of six hundred sixteen dollars and thirty five cents, and uh, um, it needs to be submitted by April the fourth, ten business days from now. And um, if there is no other business before the zoning hearing officer, I will adjourn the meeting. For the record, you do just have to open public comment, even if we don't have any. Oh, and there is someone joined on Zoom, so we might want to. Okay, talk well then. Um, then before we move on with approval, um, 
I'd like to open the public hearings for anyone who, and, and um, also uh, um, if anyone has raised their hand. Yes, we do have Karen York online and her hand did go up. So give me a second while I um, pull up our timer. Yeah, thanks for... Uh, and they'll get five minutes. Yeah, that five minutes will be fine. Uh, Ms. York, please accept this request to unmute your microphone and begin speaking. Hello? Hello? Yes, my name is Karen York. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I live two doors up from this plot, and I would like to know exactly what kind of place is going to be built, whether the entrance to, I guess, a home is going to be on El Granada Boulevard, or is it going to be down around on San, San Pedro Road? It looks to me like it could be either. I also wanted to know who are these people? Um, is this an investment or is this an intention to build a home and live there? And I was wondering why it was exempt from uh, an environmental or I guess a certain level of environmental review, but it seems like that was addressed a minute ago saying that it was a minor parcel of land. But if there's anything else that can be added to that, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, um, thank you for your comments and questions, Mrs. York. So um, just to clarify where we are in the sort of development review process, um, this lot was created before the county had um, subdivision regulations in place. And um, so in, in, to address that, um, a lot of many times subdivisions were created without the kinds of uh, requirements for streets, um, sewers, water provision, um, and other uh, utilities that that um, accompany uh, typically accompany uh, requirements for subdivision approval. Um, and and the certificate of compliance process is an opportunity to kind of turn the clock back and um, look at a given parcel and see whether or not there are any requirements from the general plan or the subdivision ordinance that should have been applied or would have been applied uh, then in order to make sure that the, that the lot complies with the um, general plan zoning ordinance and, um, and, and the uh, subdivision regulations. So this is simply um, a step in the process where we assess whether this lot um, meets those requirements. It is not a approval for any specific housing development. Obviously it's zoned residential, so that's what can be built here as a house. Um, and uh, there is, since this is in El Granada, um, there is a process uh, for design review for single family homes in El Granada. And that's a public meeting um, held in uh, El Granada, as it turns out. Um, and, and the design review committee, uh, um, after Preparation of the staff report by the staff will review the design and, and potentially make changes. It gives the public an opportunity to weigh in on the design, whether or not the, um, the you know, design meets the design guidelines and the zoning requirements and the local coastal program policies. So there's a, a number of, of you know, issues that the um, um, Design Review Committee looks at. Um, okay, and, thank you. Um, I look forward to that opportunity. El Granada Boulevard, especially at this point, is very narrow and the traffic is increasing. Um, I guess I'm kind of concerned if a major development, which would involve a lot of different people, I don't know, a family of four, five, and five cars, five new cars, 
Right now, we almost have no, no room to park on the street as it is. And we're at that section on El Granada Boulevard that only one side of the street is open because of the need for a fire road. So it's those kind of concerns. And that's why I was also, I guess at this point, perhaps it's not determined, but to understand where the entrance would be either on El Granada Boulevard or down on San Pedro uh, yeah. Avenue. We'll, so we'll, when would those things become available? Uh, just, when, the information about that. Uh, thanks. Yeah, as I said, we're not at that stage in the development process. We do not have an application. Okay. Development. We don't have a proposal before us. Um, and so it would be premature for us to discuss the details of that here. I think um, we, as I, as I described, um, the county has a public, publicly accessible design review process for reviewing development um, of single family homes in El Granada. And you, and because you live so nearby, you will get a public notice of that um, meeting. And we'll actually, uh, if you want, you can um, um, email Angela uh, Chavez, who is, whose name is in the staff report. All right. And, and provide her with your uh, name and address so that we can make sure to notify you um, when that, development proposal comes forward. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for your for your questions and your input. Um, so apologize for jumping the gun on uh, skipping over the, the public hearing. Didn't know that we had somebody um, waiting online. Um, so I'll close the public hearing. And um, again, Ask, uh, I've asked and been answered by Mr. Wang that he's read and uh, agrees with staff report findings, conditions of approval. So therefore, uh, pursuant to the findings and subject to the conditions of approval, um, I approve PLN 2023-00003 um, application for a certificate of compliance B. And um, if anyone wishes to appeal this decision, they may do so by um, submitting a written uh, appeal application to the Planning and Building Department by um, April 4th, 2024, and uh, by five o'clock, accompanied by a um, appeal fee of $616.35. And um, thank you all again for, um, for joining us today. And I'm going to adjourn the meeting for a second time. Thank <laughs> you.